you know? excited to have you on here uh i've been following you for how long like maybe about a year now yeah maybe a year a yeah over on a year. twitter yeah. on instagram oh. and uh followed you as like dirty germs <laughs> then i was like oh this guy does real estate too yeah. what <laughs> what doesn't he do <laughs> uh, oh well um, yeah i guess for the people listening um yeah, if you guys don't know me, I'm Jeremy Mateo, um, I guess. Uh, we're also doing a video for this podcast. I, I do YouTube. So I guess for my video, um, this is Kiara. She's also a you know younger um, real estate agent in the you know millennial space here in Hawaii. And she invited me to uh, be a guest on her podcast. So I figured, hey, let's... Uh, Let's put it on YouTube, you know? <laughs> and I love that because uh, yeah. the podcast, it's definitely just an audio thing right now. And mm-hmm. eventually I would like to grow to video, but I didn't have the equipment set up, you mm-hmm. know, and all of that. But I'm, I'm super geeked about the audio uh, yeah. slash visual pairing when you put it on social media. Same, same. Getting all that content out there. Um, Shout so, out to uh, Redefined Media and Bryce yes. and Andrew Tran. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really excited that, um, thank you for, you know, allowing us to like do the video and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm really uh stoked to do this collaboration with you um but yeah let's get into it man we have a lot of things that we want to talk right? about like, <laughs> let's I, go let's go know, <laughs> i'm so excited because you know you're somebody that i've been i've been looking up to for a really long time like i was saying i followed you on instagram and social media and all that mm. <clears throat> twitter when i saw you play on uh uh, what was that? Arm and Hammer? Oh, you yeah. opened up for Arm and Hammer? <laughs> yeah. I was so impressed, dude, because by that time, I had already seen all your real estate stuff. Uh-huh. I know you're, like, you're worth your salt. You do a lot of engagement, you know, trying to educate other people. Mm-hmm. And then here I see you like killing it on the stage. And I'm like, <laughs> like dude. That guy's a realtor, you know? He sells homes. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I told that to somebody in the crowd. I was like, dude, I know this guy. Like, he sells homes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so how did you get into all that, man? Tell us a little bit about your background. Oh, yeah. So I guess uh, we'll take it from the start, you know. Um, um, I was born here in Hawaii. Uh, I was a military brat. Uh, my father was in the army, so uh, we moved to San Antonio, Texas, Savannah, Georgia, then Boston, Massachusetts, and that's kind of like where my whole dad's side of the family is. And then I guess we moved back to Hawaii when I was six, and then we've stayed here ever since. Um, went to Campbell High School. You know, lived in Ever Beach. Uh. <laughs> oh, I don't know if we can be friends. I'm from Waipahu. We'll, we'll edit that out. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I went there. Um, yeah, you know, I guess from there, my dad was a, a officer. So we weren't really rich. We weren't really poor. We're kind of like, you know, in the middle class mm-hmm. family. Uh, my mom, that's when she became a realtor. Um, then I graduated high school, went to college at UC Irvine. My whole family uh, moved with me and at that time I was a bio major and I actually wanted to be a dentist right Random. crazy right okay <laughs> I thought okay yeah you know my dad was like okay son you need to either go in the military or you know pick something in the medical field or you know some occupation that is set in stone that mm-hmm. will you know it's reliable exactly you know and I feel like with the older generation they're always you know especially with um immigrating families you know mm-hmm. our parents I feel like they moved here they immigrated here from a different country um, with the mindset that they want to survive, you know, yes, like they, they yes. go, they go with the route that's most, um, I guess, um, reliable, mm-hmm. like the safest route. Yeah. And I mean, you know, all power to them, most respect for them. You know, they made the good life so we could have a good life. Yeah. And I guess their views on everything is just, just a little to, different. Yeah. It's just the to survive. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like with our generation now, we're so lucky to be here. I think we're not trying to survive, you know, we're trying to live. We're trying to flourish. Exactly. <laughs> trying to strive. So, I mean, I was like, okay, fine, dad, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll be a dentist. Um, yeah. I have no idea. I thought, oh, you know, I love going to the dentist, you know, my teeth are nice. And I'm trying to imagine you like a white coat, <laughs> like, open your mouth. Like, right, real. right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I was like, okay, fine. So I was a bio major my first year, and I realized, holy crap, this is super hard. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know anything about chemistry or it's biology, you know, <laughs> and um, I guess hi- in high school, I was like, you know, really f- good 4.0 student and mm-hmm. I thought it was easy, but little did I know that, you know, Hawaii education is really not that great. Oh, you know? <laughs> dude. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I go to UC Irvine, I like struggle, I'm like a straight C student, barely mm. getting by, and then that year, unfortunately, my parents got divorced, so my dad... Uh, moved away. He went back to the Philippines um, to do some work over there. My mom moved back to Hawaii, and I figured, okay, you know, I'm, I'm like struggling here in California by myself. I might as well just move back because college is cheaper. You know, I think mm-hmm. at the time Irvine was, 
I think like 60 grand a year. Oh. Yeah. And I was like, oh. And then at UH Gosh. with in-state tuition, it was like nine grand a year. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, you know, let's just move back. So we moved back. And at that time, um, the divorce actually bankrupt both of my parents. So we're just like, we went from really, really good life to like really, really crappy life. And I was like, oh. So my mom moves back. Uh, my dad's gone. Um, my siblings, my brothers and sisters, they're still in like elementary and high school, I think. Mm-hmm. You're the and oldest? Yeah, I'm yeah. the oldest. And so we moved back. But when we moved back, um, because of the bankruptcy, my mom couldn't do anything. We couldn't get like a lease or anything. So we had to move with my cousin. And we're li- literally living in their living room. And um, my cousin was actually, I'll talk about this later, but she's the one that got me into locations. So we're living there in the living room. And my mom still has her real estate license active in Hawaii. So she started, you know, busting ass and selling houses. And in like three to four months, she got us into a rental. And soon after that, because um, this whole time, she actually bought property in 08 and it was being rented out this whole time. So when we moved back in 2013, she the tenant moved out and we, we got to move back into uh, the house that she owned. So I was like, wow, you know, like having that in your back pocket having real estate, you know, that kind of like, that, that, net. that was the first, like, you know, light Aha bulb, moment. like, it's like, oh, wow, you know, mm-hmm. we have something to fall back on. So I noticed my mom, you know, she's supporting these three kids, one's going to college on her own through real estate. And I was like, you know what? Screw being a dentist, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, mom I, is yeah, like, I, need I was to, like, I need to know what she's doing. Yeah, exactly. Like, I was like, <laughs> I want to do that, you know, like, uh-huh. and she's a single, well, yeah, single mom and supporting her kids. So I was like, okay. So the next day I switched my major to business. Um, I enrolled into a real estate school online and I think I was 19 at the time. So fast forward, you know, I got my real estate license and at that time I was like partying, you know, I was in a frat. It was really hard to take it seriously. So I didn't pass on my first try. Um, Mm -hmm. I only tell a few friends how many times I passed, but we'll just for the podcast sake, you know, just say I didn't pass on the first time. (laughs) (laughs) But um, anyway, so that happens. I'm 19. uh, Get my real estate license. I joined the firm that my mom is in and it's a really mom and pop shop and it's a really small firm and there was no training. So Mm -hmm. I joined and they're like, good, good luck, Jeremy. Welcome to the firm. Um, yeah, and that's it. There you go. And then here I am, a a 19 year old realtor (laughs) and I'm just like, what I do, you know? So I realized, okay, if I get my real estate license and I make a hundred grand my first year, I'm going to drop out of college. And that was the plan. And that didn't happen. (laughs) So I was like, okay, I'm going to stick to college. So Mm -hmm. I keep my license up, but I figured, you know, I'll come back to that later. Um, Graduate in 2017. And that's when I went into locations. And when I got my license, remember my cousin that we were living with? She got her license the same time I did, except I went to my mom's firm. Well, it's not her firm. It was the one she was working for. And my cousin went to locations. And um, during that time, I'm doing nothing, and my cousin's selling all these houses. And I was like, whoa, wh- yeah. what are they doing over there? Uh-huh. So I figured, okay, I'll do that after college. So call- graduation comes by, I join locations, and then um, I was like, wow, like phenomenal training. It gave me the confidence. And this was like 2017, and then going into 20, 2018, I was like, wow, okay, like let's do this. And then that's when everything started Time happening. Picking up. Well, 2018. So I guess this will come into, I guess, the mindset part, you know. Yeah. So going into 2018, I, I, I guess I had a, like a chip on my shoulder because, you know, when you go into the real estate industry in Hawaii, you always see these, um, you have these conversations. What is, you know, when you meet new people, what is that one thing that people always ask is, what or, do you do? Or that and what high school did you go oh. to? Yeah, yeah, oh, in yeah, Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, of course, you know, when I'm, I'm new, meeting all, all these new people and I'd be like, like, this is no disrespect to, you know, what I'm about to say. But basically, I'd meet new people and I'd be like, oh, where, what high school did you go to? And they would be like, you know, this private school, this private school. And then um, they will be like, oh, how about you? And I'll be like, oh, I went to Campbell. And, and the like, conversation changes. Yeah. They're like, oh. They're like, oh, yeah. Oh. And, it, and that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, again, no disrespect to, you know, private school kids. Um, it was just that that stigma. That yeah, people... yeah. It's, it's a weird stigma. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it's outdated for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason. But uh, stereotypes, you know, like the... <laughs> Oh, here comes our drinks. I know. <laughs> Sorry, I totally got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. 
Thank oh, you. No, yeah. this is like the perfect time to come in too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you so yeah. much. It's like 10, 10, 10, 20. 10 a.m. <laughs> it's about that time. Okay. It's about that time. We'll get some coffee. All right. Quick That's pause. Here, here's oh, your drink. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll, um, we'll get the juices flowing now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a bit of a lightweight. Um, it's okay. And I it's typically okay. drink beer instead of like hard vodka. So if I do get a little silly. <laughs> this is a so. Sprite, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But um, but yeah, like um, it's kind of it's kind of crummy though. Like you get that attitude because I get yeah. that too from like being from Waipahu. Mm-hmm. I actually had this like one dad um, uh, approach me. He I used to go to Milani in elementary school and middle school, mm-hmm. and this uh, dad at one of my work uh, places, he his daughter went to school with me and he recognized me. And this is after I graduated high school. Uh-huh. He's like, hey, whatever happened to you? You know, when I told him I went to Waipahu, he's like. Ooh. Ooh. Right, it's like, what do you mean? Ooh. I was like, sir, <laughs> we have one of the best science programs, if not the best science program in the state. Like, yeah. come back, come back at me. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> anyway, go but, ahead. Um, yeah, so <laughs> when you meet new people in the industry, at least from my perspective, I was getting that a lot, and it kind of like pissed me off, you know. And me uh, personally, I'm a very competitive person, mm-hmm. um, and I feel like I, I guess I. Uh, relate to a lot of other competitive people who, like it's that chip on your shoulder yeah. mentality you know yeah. like you know me i'm like a big patriots fan mm-hmm. i love tom brady you are so wild with in your videos <laughs> and, like your reactions to your, the games and all that yeah, I, yeah. I die like this one time you yeah. jumped off of something like <laughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. no i'm just kidding cut, can we talk cut about that, that out no. <laughs> You can leave that in there. It's just funny. But, um, but yeah, like if, you know, people, if you don't know his story, you know, he was never the, you know, fastest guy, never the most, you know, strongest guy. He like ran like a baby giraffe, you know, mm-hmm. it was just really crummy. But he had that mindset like, you know, I want to be the best. I want to be good. I want to beat everyone. And that's how I kind of felt. You know, I felt like people were underestimating me. Yeah. All that. So going into 2018, I met with my coach. I had all these goals. I was like, OK, I want to sell five million in volume and I want to make 10 transactions uh, I'm 20 I'm 23 years old I was like okay I can do this right I didn't do it <laughs> so 2018 was like a such a miserable year um, I only sold three homes made about like twenty thousand dollars and I was like what the hell is going on you know um, and what is this like year three that you've got your license this year is two? well I've had like my license since I was 19 mm-hmm. so this is year I think four or five um, that okay. I had my license uh, for the beginning was all inactive because I was um, in college in yeah so 2018 you know failed miserably I remember just not being able to sleep because I was just like at night just thinking about like oh god I suck you know like I'm, and it, it got so bad where there's points where I was just thinking to myself okay you know maybe I'm not cut out for this and, mm-hmm. and it got to the point where I actually got my life ins- insurance license because I was actually thinking about doing something different yeah, changing my career and then, uh, oh, that's strong. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually quite good, though. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I was like, Ugh. but I sold one policy in life insurance oh, while still doing real estate or trying to do real estate. And I did it, and I was just like, Ugh, this is not for me. You know, like, in real estate, I feel like everyone's happy. You show them a home, and they're like, wow, whoa, cool, you know. And then in life insurance, you basically – it's, you you it's basically a, scare them. It's a rough job yeah, being yeah, in insurance. Yeah. You have to yeah. scare them into being like, yo, you might die like tomorrow. You like, need to buy this Worst policy. case scenario, you get walk out that door, you get hit by a car. Right. And it's just like, what oh. are you going to do? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, So I sold that policy. I was like, eh, I didn't feel good about it. So I was like, you know what? I Mentally, I just made a choice. I was like, no, I'm going to stick this through and I'm not going to quit. You know, so mm-hmm. I think I, I took the L for that year and around November, um, that's when I started planning with my coach again and with my company locations like we we were giving this coach and you can have access to them all the time her name my coach is her name is Lisa Crosby Torres so if she's watching this you know shout out to you um, yeah I owe most if not all my success to her because you know she really I guess opened my eyes and saw things that I didn't see mm-hmm. and so again I told her like I have the same goal I want to sell five million in volume and I want to sell you know ten transactions so she told me, okay, cool. I want you to read this book. And it was called 12 Week Year. And that changed my life. Uh, for the people who haven't read it, um, basically, God, I'm saying um a lot. Sorry. No, okay, no worries. <laughs> but if, uh, the book is basically that people <clears throat> procrastinate with their goals. You know, you say, oh, I have this yearly goal. And they procrastinate, procrastinate till like the end of the year. That's when they start cranking, mm-hmm. you know, because they know they're behind. So the idea is that you separate your goals into 
four mini goals and then you break down those four mini goals into 12 week 12 week goals so that way you're you know you're on it all the time and then so i looked at the calendar i was like okay cool if i do 12 weeks here 12 weeks here blah 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 i noticed that there's one week gap in between all of them so i figured okay i'm gonna go super super hard that 12 weeks and then that one week just do whatever i want mm-hmm, relax mm-hmm. go to the beach and then i was doing that and i was like oh cool like so i started the year off strong because i had a sale in january i was like okay cool but the thing is with real estate you know as a fellow realtor that there's escrow and that mm-hmm. takes like 30, 30 to 45, 45 days, days. Yeah. yeah so you're like oh, yeah so gosh. in order for me to have sold that in january i needed to put that escrow in like in december. december and the thing was with real estate they say that the peak year the peak season in real estate is the summer so i the way i thought about that is you know summer is your playoffs you know and then quarter one and quarter two is kind of like your regular season so what is the off season is, i like your train of thought right about. right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I like that. the off season is november december uh-huh. because that's usually like the slowest time of the year mm-hmm. for real estate why because it's the holidays no People, one's trying to buy houses no one's trying to buy yeah. houses They're trying to buy gifts mm-hmm. christmas presents and they're trying to be home with their family and they're not trying to move. So I was like, okay, I need to look for the people who are trying to make some moves. And thankfully I had one of my other millennial friends, he was looking for an investment property, small investment property. So got him to escrow, awesome. So I started off the year strong, uh, had a sale in January. And I was like, if it wasn't for the off season hard work, I wouldn't have come out strong, you know? And Mm -hmm. where our champions built, in the off season, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not too like sportsy. Like, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that somewhere. But um, yeah. So that happened, and then another thing my coach recommended is um, you saw me post it on my Instagram is that big calendar. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I should have brought it. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'll probably post it later. But basically, it's a big calendar, and then you put stickers on it to keep track of your sales, your mm. days off, um, and your appointments, and then so. January was good. I had a sale. February was good. I had another sale. And then March goes by. There's no sale. And I was like, what is going on? And then so I looked back at the calendar and I realized, oh, my gosh, in February, I only had one appointment. So in real estate, uh, the idea is that the more appointments usually ends up to more sales. So Mm -hmm. if you by looking um, at the calendar, I realized, holy crap, I only had one appointment in February. No wonder I have zero sales in March. Yeah, it's a numbers game for yeah. sure. So it was having that calendar, that visual aspect that made me, I guess, aware to, okay, Jeremy, you need to step up your game. So, um, yeah, if it wasn't for that, that definitely helped me. So I remember you saying, like, how do you, like, keep up, you know, the, I guess, the hustler mentality. Is yeah. Just, I think it was just being aware, you know, okay, what am I doing? What am I doing wrong? And, yeah pretty much yeah (laughs) yeah you know uh when i saw that calendar that you had posted i was i was pretty blown but like you know uh that kind of it fell along the same kind of train of thought that i have for setting my goals which is reverse engineering and that's essentially what you do right is reverse engineer your entire year um and that that's a new idea that came to me but i think that the whole point of that though is just being deliberate about Mm -hmm. every single day every single week that you have and yes. and um over time all of these little things that you do day to day they compound have you, have you read the compound effect yes yeah, uh, i so love good. that yeah. book <laughs> and you know when i when i followed you um and looking at all your content how you keep track of your sales your goals because mm-hmm. you you do that a lot which i really like is you throw your goals up there for everybody to see yeah, like yeah, yeah. in the beginning of the year you know that that tweet you made about i'm gonna make I'm going to, I'm going to hit 5 million in sales, mm, yeah, yeah. you know? And I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. Like this guy's they put it out there, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a level of accountability. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, you know, oh, shit, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I do that sometimes. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> what was they saying? Um, about your. The tweet. I will say that when I tweeted that, when I set my goals, mm-hmm. I was 50% confident and honestly 50% scared because I set those goals, but I had like. I wasn't sure how I was going to do it, but I, I knew I was determined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I was going to do it. And that's what I was going to say was that that's what I liked about you. Um, and I liked to follow, uh, was that you just kind of put yourself out there and mm-hmm. you were like, you know what, I'm going to figure it out. Yes. Like, I like that mentality about you that, um, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. Exactly. And can, can we talk about like what, what you ended up with once you ended the year with? <laughs> so 2019, it was really crazy. It was, it was wild. Um, <laughs> yeah. So my goal was 5 million in volume and 10 sales. 
I ended up with 7.2 million and 17 sales. It was crazy. And um, yeah, there was like certain point, like I'm not going to lie. There's certain points of the year when I was super behind. I was just like, gosh, like how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. And um, it honestly, like I think this is where we talk about like the struggles, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess. Oh, before um, we move on, I oh, was yeah, going to yeah. tell you, I remember what I was going to say. Um, I get very like Grand Cardone vibes from you. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, that like that 10x, you know, yeah, like, yeah, like <laughs> I'm going to hit, I'm going to make this high ass goal. Yeah. And I mean, even if I don't make it, mm -hmm. as long as I'm striving to it, mm -hmm. I'm still going to, I'm going to be okay. Exactly. I'm going to hit something, you know. Exactly. And, uh, and that's what I've always admired about you. <laughs> and, you know, that, that's kind of like what I look to take into my business. And that's what I also try to tell people, you know, when they ask me about, you know, mentality or mm -hmm. how do you stay focused or goals setting or whatever it is it's like dude you just gotta have a goal and yeah. like be crazy about it yeah, yeah. like you know and uh, but in any case i didn't mean to interrupt no you. no yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> go ahead yeah it's all it's all like you said it's all mental you know it starts from here and like you just have to keep going and going and then um so yeah i guess struggles you know of course it, no one can just have that mentality all the time you know there's going to be some days where you don't want to get up or you can't wake up early but you just got to push yourself and i think um i guess there's in my company, we have monthly meetings, right? And it's funny because the way I hit my goals were f through failures, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's where you learn. That's yeah. where you learn the most is your failures. Yeah. And if you're not learning from your failures, then you're looking at it completely wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like 2018, it was a complete failure. And I think that's what like lit me up to start mm -hmm. to, for 2019. And then um, there is this. So, yeah, our, our company has these monthly meetings and each month um, they put like a slideshow of all the agents who hit the highest, you know, had the most sales from the previous month. And then there's a part in the slideshow where they talk about the top five newcomers. And then in our company, a newcomer is someone who's been in the business for, or been in the company for 24 months or less. So I was like counting it. I was like, okay, I'm still a newcomer. I was like, okay, shoot. I think by August, I'll be number five top newcomers. So I was like, okay, I was calculating it. And then I was like, oh yeah, actually, I was calculating my value. Um, by this month, after this sale, I'll hit number five. And I was like, okay, cool, cool. So next meeting comes and I'm like, I'm so excited. Like I have my phone ready. <laughs> I'm getting ready to record. And then top five newcomers up. Number five is this newer guy. And I'm like, what the heck? Oh. And it shows this volume and it's under, than, under mine. And I was like, yo, there's a mistake. So I yeah, text yeah. my coach like, what is going on? What is going on? Like, it's so funny. Like, <laughs> so, well, wait, let me ask you this. How did you feel in that moment when you're like, you were expecting your name to show up on that, like that board and yeah. then it was somebody else's name? What was, was the feeling? I was, I was freaking pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, what the hell is going on? So I text her like, we're in the meeting and she's like, okay, we'll figure it out later. So I was like, okay. So she calls me. She's like, hey, Jeremy. So I know you're mad. You did have a higher volume from him. But in August, you make 25 months. And I was just like, oh, oh my God. Like, I missed it by one. Semantics, man. Yeah. <laughs> so it was at that point, like, okay, yeah, I was crushed for like maybe 30, 40, 45 minutes. And then I was just like, you know what? Screw it. Like, I'm just going to work super hard. You know, screw a freaking slideshow. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. just going to go ham. And then. So wait, that, yeah. that right there, like that switch, because yeah. it sounds like it was very instantaneous for you in that yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for a lot of people, that's not, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a long drawn out process where they have to kind of like process their emotions yeah, and like yeah, figure yeah. out, okay, like I'm in a slump. How do I get out of it? Mm -hmm. What What's your train of thought? Like, have you always been that way um, mm -hmm. where you're quick to kind of brush things off or have you had to kind of learn how to do that? Um, it just depends on like how big the L was, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I, I've of course, definitely had yeah. to learn. Like, you, I'm stubborn. You, <laughs> if you need time to uh, like take a step back and analyze it, you know, do it. And then for me, um, I forgot where I read it or heard it, but it's that when you act without fear, without fearing the consequence, then you you go in that I don't give a f mode, mm -hmm. and then you just, you know, um, because I remember when I was working throughout the year, I was like worried. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna make top five newcomers by this month, blah blah blah, and I, and I was just trying to like I was worried, and then after that, I was just like, you know what? I didn't make it. There's nothing I can do. Like, all I can do is just make more sales and hit my main goal. So I was just like, Let, let's do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it was funny because that lit me on fire. So the next two months for September and October, um, I sold seven sales in two months. I remember three was in uh, September, and that was like 1.7 million. And then October was five sales. Mm -hmm. And then that was like 2.8. Oh, that was eight sales actually. Sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, in October I did five, and that was a total of like two point five million. And it's just funny because I was like worried throughout the whole year, and then it was that one failure that 
push me. It's like, you know what? Screw it and just go hard, you know? You know, you mentioned something about uh, being uh, deliberate about the efforts that you make, right? Mm -hmm. And um, kind of pushing yourself to hustle. One uh, thing that's been sticking out over the last couple of weeks in my life has been uh, motivation versus discipline. Mm -hmm. So um, when Ooh, you don't okay. have yeah, the yeah. motivation to mm -hmm. do what you need to do, that's where you need to be disciplined because mm -hmm. you won't always be motivated, but yeah. you can always be disciplined. disciplined yes. And one um, of his funny story, one of my friends called me the other day and he's in Arizona and he's, he's trying to get back into fitness and stuff. And he called me and he's like, hey, tell me, tell me something so that, you know, I can get motivated to get in the gym. And I laid that on him. I was like, I was like, okay, are you ready for this? Cause I don't think you are. And he, I told him that and he was like, Ooh, you're right. Mm -hmm. But that's what it boils down to. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I see that you do that mm -hmm. cause you're very deliberate and, you know, like you said, you've had your downs, yeah. you know, you've yeah. had the times where you're like, man, I don't know if I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. but you show up every day. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's why I admire you so much. You <laughs> show up. <laughs> no, it's funny you say that. So I guess with discipline, um, Ooh, I can I can go into a I guess daily routine, because mm -hmm. um, I know that's like a common question that you know I always wonder what you know millionaires are doing every day and all that, and um, so yes there are days when I'm not motivated I just don't want to do anything but because I'm disciplined um, I was like you know I'll just do it because like it's part of my routine, um, so my daily routine is that. I wake up at seven in the morning and then I go to the gym at eight to nine and I feel like. The going to the gym is very important to my discipline mm -hmm. because I have to do it. And like, you know, I'm, tr I'm trying to be healthy. I try to be physical, too. But I feel like I need that in order to get my day started because, you know, I, I go to the gym, take some pre-workout. I'm like, I'm wired. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so every Bouncing. so I do this thing where is I do my workout, whatever I'm hitting that day. And then after each workout and this is every weekday is I run a mile as fast as I can. You know, not too much. Just I feel like a mile is good. And I feel like that I do that because one, you know, cardio is good, you know, um, gets you healthy, gets the blood flowing. And then also, two, it's literally this is going to sound super corny, but it's it's literally that extra mile, you know. And when I'm running that mile, there's times when I can do it easily. There's times when I'm super like, oh, I can't do this. So I'm running. And then in my head, I'm literally telling myself, Jeremy, don't be a freaking bitch. Just finish <laughs> this last mile. And then I feel like when you have that voice in your head telling you like you know don't be a bitch like just keep going keep going if you have that voice in your head telling you that every day like that will correlate with everything in uh your life throughout the rest of the day so i finished a mile and i'm like okay see it wasn't that bad you did it you know mm -hmm. it could have been eight minutes could have been 12 minutes but you still did it you know and i feel good after and nobody's ever felt bad after like a workout yeah, exactly. you know exactly like nobody wow, i did that like, you know? yeah no one ever regretted <laughs> yeah, going yeah. the extra mile mm -hmm. you know and then so i'm done with my workout and then i go straight home and then it's around like 9 9 10 and or 9 15 and then i start you know hitting emails and i feel good i just ran my mile did my workout pre-workout still in my blood so i'm like let's go 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 let's make all the calls <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm answering email and then in my typical day usually after the gym i do my email and then i usually have like a meeting at an office or a meeting with a client or showings and then i usually do that um those emails are usually like escrow work mm -hmm. so i'm doing i'm going around the island doing whatever i need to do errands and then usually i try to be home by three because i live in Eva beach if i'm out past four you know that's like traffic so I'm just like, okay, is anyone in town? I hit up my friends. Is anyone in town? Just wait out the traffic. Yeah, 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 let's, yeah. let's go to Bevy or let's go to a bar, mm -hmm. you know, just wait it out. And then at seven, then I go home. And that's usually like my day to day. But um, as far as discipline and fitness, like you said, it, I, I think I owe it to going to the gym that helped me with my discipline because mm -hmm. it was that extra mile, you know? <laughs> I know it's so corny. cheesy. <laughs> but literally, I dig it though. You know, yeah, it <laughs> helps so much. And I'm just like, Wow, because like if I can, you know, when I'm on that treadmill and I'm dying sometimes, um, I'm like, oh, God. And I did it. I was like, OK, so if I can do that, almost dying, I can make this extra phone call. I yeah, can yeah. call this person, you know, like those awkward cold calls no longer be like, you know, Weird. a pain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, now, you know, now that you've kind of sustained this kind of practice for mm -hmm. a little bit, it kind of are you, is it safe to say that it kind of flows naturally for you now? Yeah. So in the beginning of 2019, um, it was hard. Like I didn't want to wake up early. Now it's just like nothing, you know. You ever had like a? Were you ever in like a fake it till you make it type situation where you're like, okay, like I'm none of these things, mm -hmm. but I'm just gonna act like I'm some of these things, mm -hmm. and then eventually I'll be that. Like, oh yeah, dude. I think me? my I think my whole life up until last year was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just I knew that it's all about confidence mm -hmm. and people gravitate to people who have confidence. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to show my clients, hey, you can trust me. 
And if I'm not confident, they're not going to trust me. You know, mm-hmm. like, would you have surgery? Like, hey, doctor, like, can you perform surgery on like, me? It's like, mm. uh, no. Like, if he has I'll, I'll try. Like, nah. I'll try. Yeah, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't, I don't want to trust this guy, you know? So I knew that if I was confident, it was charismatic, and I showed them, like, hey, I can get the job done for mm-hmm. you, they'll trust me. But, you know, at the beginning, it's hard to have confidence when you've made no sales, you know, it's like, how can I show people? Yeah, I'm going to get the job done for you when I've never really done it, you know? Yeah. And I think it's important to note that the whole fake it till you make it thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, it's not about lying. Mm -hmm. It's not about Mm -hmm. lying about who you are or your capabilities. It's Mm -hmm. about, um, faking your belief in yourself, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. because that's what it is. It's not yeah. about what you're projecting out to other people. It's about what you think about yourself and then how you carry it and how exactly. you express it. It's right? all mental, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Like um, with the confidence thing is you, you don't have to tell you like if a client asks you, like, have you ever sold a home before? And it, this happened to me and I, I tell them no. But, you know, I promise you that I will work super hard. No one will work harder than me and I'll get the job done for you. And if, you know, for your confidence, I have, you know, mentors looking out for me. And I remember like growing up in the industry, starting at 19, you know, a lot of people look down on you like, oh, who's this kid? You know, you can't sell a house and you're just a millennial. So my pitch was, and I, at the beginning I was super insecure about my age. Like mm-hmm. oh, no one wants to buy a house from this kid, you know, but I start, I stopped thinking that way mm-hmm. and I started doing that, you know, fake it till you make it. And then I actually started believing, like f- really believing in myself. I wasn't faking anymore. And I would tell people, it's like, yes, I'm young in the business. Um, you know, all respect to the older, um, you know, veteran realtors that they have all the experience. But I can tell you that with me, even though I have a little experience, that I have all the time and energy in the world to dedicate to you. Because with these veteran agents, you know, of course, they're going to have all these clients. It's like, would you rather work with this young, hungry kid that will give you 100% of his time Mm -hmm. or this veteran agent who's going to juggle you and give you 20% of the time, you know? I like that. I dig that a lot. Like, you took your perceived weaknesses because they're not weaknesses there's just yeah. your perceived ones exactly and you're taking them and turning them into your strengths yeah that's amazing exactly and like some people bought it some people was like yeah okay whatever you know but mm-hmm. the people who well, not bought it like the people who believed in me you mm-hmm. know were actually like fellow millennials and yeah they they like that it's like okay yeah cool and i feel like other millennials like to work with other people because mm-hmm. you can relate to them you know yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. okay let's go for showings here and then after that let's go to a bar or something mm-hmm. or let's celebrate at the club and i'll dj you yeah, know? yeah yeah <laughs> for anybody who has not like listened to this guy dj i mean i don't know if you're djing still but <laughs> um i'm unofficially retired you know a lot of people ask me if i did you know uh-huh. I, um 2019 took off so of course i want to focus more of my time on djing mm-hmm. i mean real, real estate, estate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well i'm so glad that i yeah. had a chance to see you at arm and hammer then because yeah, you yeah. killed it it was so great and <laughs> thank like you, thank you. I, I love like uh djs that know how to read a crowd and mm-hmm. you definitely know how to do that yeah, That's yeah, so yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you yeah no worries um but <laughs> you know regarding uh real estate though mm-hmm. you know and that whole mindset so yeah. what, are, what have been the biggest challenges for you Let's see, challenges as far as like, um, what do you mean? Uh, just in general, mm-hmm. like, you know, whether it be like with sales or like your mindset, whatever it is, like what, what's been the hardest thing for you to do in your journey to get to where you are today and how have you been able to overcome it? I think, I think we, um, uh, it's basically just keeping, like you said, that, that mindset, mm-hmm. you know, strong. There are times when I wake up and it's like, ugh, I feel motivated. I just want to stay home and chill. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's just all mindset and getting discipline, you know, and I feel like with most people, you just got to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? You know, and for me, I told myself, you know, I really want it. And in my company with those, you know, those monthly meetings, you see all the top agents. They're selling this million, this million, how many sales? And I'm just like, holy cow, that, you know, to some people that might discourage them. But to me. You know, I saw that and it's all how you perceive things, Mm -hmm. you know, it's I saw that I was like, wow, you know, I want to be like that guy. In fact, no, I want to beat that guy, you know, Mm because I'm very competitive in like not in like in a healthy way. You know, it's it's not not, like a tear you down type of way. Yeah, yeah. it's like, wow, that's awesome. Competition's healthy. Yeah, I love competition. Exactly. And that's why like that, you know, with that seeing that that made me like, wow, I want to step up my game. And that's why I feel like. I, I'm super out there with my goals and what I do because I want to show other young realtors who are, you know, really hungry and want to, you know, kick ass in the business that, wow, this guy, you know, started out from nothing too, like, and now he's good. Like, maybe I can do that too. And I, I show people. And, you know, this year I'm trying to be super transparent with everything that I do yeah. to show people, like, it's an awesome business, but it's super hard. 
but anyone can do it. You just got to want it as, you know, you, you got to want it back. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, I know we're running short on time and I wanted to get into real estate in mm -hmm. particular as yeah, a business, yeah. but I think we'll save that for next time because, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're talking a lot about like mindset, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And working with like millennials. Mm -hmm. And I know you also do uh, um, networking events. Right? Yeah, like you're yeah, also yeah. part of Emerging <laughs> Leaders, right? Emerging Leaders Hawaii. Yeah, yes. yeah. And uh, let's talk about that for the, you know, okay, the rest yeah. of our time here because uh, you guys are doing great work. And mm -hmm. I love, uh, you know, the more that I kind of dip my toes into the entrepreneurial world here through this podcast and mm -hmm. through my, my own personal business um the more i'm starting to realize that man we have so many great people here you know oh, yeah. here in hawaii that mm -hmm. are doing great things and uh this door is opening wide open and i love seeing or meeting people like you mm -hmm. who are holding the door open for everybody you know what <laughs> i mean yeah yeah, yeah yeah so go ahead tell us about that that's that's exciting stuff oh yeah um so with emerging leaders uh i started out it's funny because so with my philosophy, remember I said like starting out in the business, you know, a lot of people look down on me because I'm young mm -hmm. and I hated that. And now that I, I, I'm like making it, I want to help other young people get up. So I try to do business with fellow millennials. I don't know if that's like, you know, discrimination, but uh, like yeah. I, it's not like I'm against, you know, boomers or, <laughs> or boomers. you know, the older generation is <laughs> just that I want to give the opportunity to millennials who are trying yeah. to come up because yeah, yeah. I see, you know, people are trying to work hard. It's just all they need is the opportunity, you yes. know? So like my loan officer, Joey Chun, he's under 30. My home inspector is under 30. Um, you know, my cleaning people, they're, they're young people as well. Redefine media. These guys are under 30. You, you can't know? see him, but he's behind the camera. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always trying to work with younger people. And what I want to, what I want to do was, uh, how do I meet younger, more mm -hmm. young people it's through these networking events? And it was funny. I think it was uh, 2017 or 2018. I heard about emerging leaders and I wasn't a part of it at the time. And I knew it was young millennials, young professionals networking. So I, I go there. I was like, whoa, this is awesome. The first event was like at the IBM building. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, you know, this is cool. And I knew as a realtor, a real estate agent, you need to, to be successful, successful. You need to meet as many people as you can. And I knew in my head, okay, if I can uh, hit the millennial market, get them in their homes, like that'll be good because if I keep in touch with them over time, I'll be their realtor forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if long I, term. Yeah, long if, term I, if I do a good job, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I need to be a part of this thing. Who runs this? I was like, okay, who's it? Alex Fowler. Okay, add him on Facebook. And then after that, I, I wanted to be his friend. And, you know, I started hanging out with him. And I was like, yo, dude, so like, can I be a part of this and help out? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, dude, you can, you can just invite people. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, okay. Thanks. So I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. Like he's my friend and all. Uh, we're actually best buds now. But yeah, at the yeah. time, I was like, hey, you're my friend. And I would go to these events. They're cool. But I could only make a good connection with like three or four people. And I was like, okay, how can I maximize my time? I don't want to just settle for three or four people. I want to get a lot. So I was like, okay, what if I just make my own networking events? So it's funny thing is I through my first networking event was at next door. Okay. And the way I got that venue was because I used to DJ there and I hit up the owner and I was like, <laughs> Hey dude, is it cool if we, you know, throw a networking event? I told him the idea and I was like, yeah, that's cool. So I did it. The first event, you know, I blasted it out. First event was like 60 people. And I was like, Whoa. And of course, you know, Alex at the time, he was like, Oh wow, dude, you know, you, you can really bring a crowd. And I'm like, yeah, you know, wink, wink. <laughs> I know what they get Exactly. Like <laughs> and then I threw another one, and I threw another one. It was it was very successful again. And then he was like, "Dude, you should just join me." And I was like, "Dude, I've been asking you since like, last year." And he was now, like, man. "He was like, come oh. on, now. come on." <laughs> he was like, "Oh, I thought you meant like you know you just wanted to like you know promote it." And I was like, "No, I want to like, I, I want to no. be on the board. Yeah. You know, I want to make stuff happen." Mm -hmm. So he brought me on, and then the next event we did was at Cafe Julia. That ended up being the biggest event we had with over 300, you know, hardworking millennials. And at that point, we're like, whoa, this this really has some big potential. So ever since then, it was, you know, Alex was the founder. He brought in Lauren Michaels. Um, she's a wedding planner, like phenomenal um, wedding planner. She did like, I think, 500 weddings this last year oh, in 2019. That's intense. That's uh, intense. Insane. <laughs> that's insane. <Yeah. laughs> Filling the drink, huh? <laughs> but um, yeah, so... I see these people, they're young millennials and they're killing it, you know? So I think my first event, I brought in Lauren 
to be the guest speaker and to talk about her wedding planning business. Mm -hmm. So it's Alex, he's a financial advisor, Lauren's a wedding planner. And it's funny through these networking events and you're working with them, I actually was able to get business because um, I think shortly after that event, Lauren wanted to sell her house. And so I sold it for her. And I, I think I, that was the highest price in that neighborhood too. So I was like, okay, cool. She was like, oh my God, you did a good job. Yeah. Cool. And then Alex refers me one of his military buddies. I was like, awesome. And like, it's cool because we're all millennials. We're all hardworking and we all refer business and we're all buddies, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is basically our vision with emerging leaders. And I feel like that's what business should be. Right? You know, for yeah. a really long time, business has been cutthroat where competition right? was like, yeah. you know, competition was not a good thing, mm -hmm. but I feel like competition demands of us to be our better selves, right? you know, exactly. and it goes back and forth. Yeah. And so, and on, on top of the whole competition um, <clears throat> situation and, you know, encouraging other others, like this, this space for millennials to come mm. together and feel empowered to, step into you know their professions yeah, step into yeah. their careers being reassured that even though they're millennials they're still valid in yeah, what they're yeah. pursuing i think that's what you guys are providing exactly. like you know what i mean <laughs> like you're creating that space for everybody yeah. and i think that's so yeah. dope yeah. um yeah and i think it's amazing work that you guys are doing and uh i, I want to see more of like you know what what you know what you guys have got going on mm. what are there any um events coming up oh yeah, yeah. so like? our next event is actually a week from now okay. um at house you know we throw events like we try to go different venues we've actually thrown events here in in uh, work play we've mm -hmm. thrown two events and it's always packed so yeah our next event is next friday um and the thing with us what makes us so different is one the environment we provide is like not your typical networking event it's not those that's, name tags that's what i'm saying you know icebreaker games, like you guys you are know? changing the game for what a networking event looks like yeah, or for yeah. what business should look yeah. like because it should be collaborative yeah, you know yeah. and, and essentially like it fits right well with this theme mm -hmm, you know the rising mm -hmm. tide like a rising exactly, tide lives all ships exactly, come on yeah. now <laughs> like, you know yeah. and then that's amazing stuff um but yeah uh, what what else like are you looking to do with uh with that um, that endeavor I mean emerging leaders well basically we just want to you know bring people together of all industries you know just millennials trying to meet other millennials mm -hmm. and and you know it's not it's the events technically not you know closed off to the older generation they can come too yeah, yeah. but it's just we want to bring people up you know because yeah. we've all of our lives we've been looked down upon mm. you know and like you said competition's he uh, healthy I try to invite you know other realtors too and they're like oh no those are your prospects or whatever like i know nah, that's dude, not what like, it's about yeah that, like yeah. if you connect with another person better than i connect with them by all means please you know and then if for some reason um you know after that that leads to more people and then you start stepping up your game and then you start you know being more successful than me i'd be like wow you know yeah, that's yeah, crazy yeah. like i helped a part of that and then now it's like oh my gosh i need to step up my game you know yeah so it's like healthy but it again it's all how you perceive it yes some people perceive other things differently and i think that's sad but i feel like people should you know take it as a positive you yeah know? and, you know and I, mean? I think that's why you and i get along so well because like i mean i'm one of those people like if i eat like we all eat you know yeah, i want to yeah, see yeah, you yeah. eat exactly, like I, you know yeah. if, if, if like if me and you are going for a client mm -hmm. and you close that client yeah. i'm gonna be like oh man like that's kind of yeah, crummy screw but screw you but drinks are in you you know like, screw you but like what did you do yeah, differently yeah, yeah. how can i do that better you <laughs> yeah, know yeah, yeah. and i think that's the mentality that a lot of people miss you mm -hmm. know when it comes to like pursuing what it is that they're doing um especially if they're new to something you yeah. know and they don't like you said they don't feel comfortable because you know they're inexperienced or they're mm -hmm. young or whatever but the fact is you just do it yeah, you know just do it you know yeah um, I know we're uh, hitting uh, some time here. No, we got like, we can do 10 more minutes. 10 yeah. more minutes? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, what else did I want to talk to you about? I feel like we could go on and on for oh, hours. Because yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, like you have such a great brain to pick. Um, there will be a part two to this. I, I really coming, hope yeah. so. I really hope so. Uh, because I definitely want to get into like real estate and social media. Like mm -hmm. I, you kill the game with social yeah, let's, media. Yeah, let's talk about social media. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So what are your influences? Be and um when using social media because i know before like we all started like with personal but mm -hmm. then you started using it for your business yeah, and yeah, then yeah. people started got it kind of getting like hit to your function they're <laughs> yeah, like oh yeah. what's jeremy doing yeah because you know? <laughs> your business was booming so fast through uh through social media Tell so us about that. i didn't it all started because um i graduated uh college and i was doing real estate mm -hmm. and i wasn't doing good so i was looking for other ways to you know make a living and then I found this dude on Instagram. His name is Jet Set Fly. Um, he had this ATM business and 
that uh, if you guys didn't know, I also have ATM. I business also wanted as to well. talk yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll save that for the next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, next let's, one, yeah. let's make the next one like business. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, he had this ATM business, and he was just like killing it with social media. And like, I was aware of all the things he was doing. You know, mm. he had a stack of cash, Lamborghini in the background. Like, um, what's that guy? Like um, uh, Graham Stephan. Oh uh, no, no, not, no, not Graham, Graham Stephan. Um, um, I know, there's so many of yeah, them yeah 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 it's like, so oh i gotta check out like, my lamborghini you know <laughs> yeah. that guy that guy yeah but anyway I, he was doing all that and i i understood it and he was showing all the stuff on social media basically that was like kind of i was observing what he was doing it was all marketing you know mm-hmm. and he was like okay i got a course you know to teach you how to start your atm business and me being a sucker i bought the course you bought the course but my partner I, I bought a course yeah like but my <laughs> but my partner froylin um he's actually my best friend and mm-hmm. my business partner in the atm business um he's another young hustler huh yeah, i've been yeah, following him too yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but him yeah i told him to buy the course too so we could both learn i was like oh my god we realized that like <laughs> One of us could have just bought the course. Yeah. yeah. So we both blew a thousand dollars. Like, oh. But anyway, you know him. Like he kind of went like a darker route with his Instagram. But it was him that opened me up to all these other Instagram people, and I was mm-hmm. realizing what they were doing with Instagram was all like the way they utilize their story and their posts and how they talk and how they word things and how they portray things. You know, marketing is all about how people see you, and you could do you know um, really bad marketing where you kind of rep kind of misrepresent yourself but i took the good out of it and just saw okay how can i portray stuff that you know gathers people attention and And so it's authentic at the same time exactly yeah like people love the behind the scenes stuff Mm -hmm. you know people love to see what you're doing on the day so instagram was really that's when it opened my eyes and then that's when i realized it's all about marketing and then um twitter too so here comes uh, Ben Wegman. You know, oh, I love too, that yeah. guy. Oh, I love him. <laughs> so he he's like really big on the Twitter space. And he's for real young estate. too, right? Yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. what, 24? I think, yeah, yeah, 24, like, 25. Yeah. So I was like, wow, this dude's killing it. And that's op- that opened my eyes to um, marketing on Twitter. Mm-hmm. You know, So now I just try to keep Twitter and Instagram like out there. You know, I try to be as positive as, as I can, show show my ups and my downs because you know I feel like most social media is just a highlight reel you know yes and it's not very like engaging yeah it's yeah not, there's no value it's like all the good stuff so i try my best to show the bad you know mm-hmm. um just to show people that i'm normal i'm a human being yeah. i also you know post my partying stuff you know crazy yeah but that's another conversation <laughs> but i try to show it, people like you're you know, relatable yeah, you know you're like, a person i'm a normal person yes. I, I i work hard i want a great life and you know i also do other regular stuff like normal people you know Mm -hmm. and in my business i'm not successful all the time i'll have l's i'll have failures and i feel like if people see that that'll give them more confidence saying hey jeremy is a normal guy he lost clients he lost some sales but he's Mm -hmm. still going you know yeah and i appreciate that about you because um i hit a snag recently you Mm -hmm. know with uh with my um real estate you Mm -hmm. know business Mm -hmm. um but following people like yourself who really are are honest about it because you know getting into the industry i'm sure you can relate like mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that like to like fluff up mm-hmm. you know their performance yeah, and yeah, you yeah. know what they're worth and blah 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 mm-hmm. and it can be discouraging you know if you don't yeah. have the right mindset if you don't ha- right, have the right like confidence in yourself yeah and so being able to kind of connect with people like you authentically mm-hmm. and share in those struggles, share in the lows and mm-hmm. the lessons, more, most importantly, yeah, yeah. It, it's easy to sit back and be like, OK, I hit this roadblock, but you know what? I, I can learn past it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, those are some of my favorite posts that you, you make and you're like, oh, I, I messed this up or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. I did this yeah. to fix it. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> proactive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, like everyone, you know, everyone's human, you know, that's mm-hmm. how it is. And if I feel like if you want to do good, if you want a, a better life for yourself, a nice life, you know, more power to you. But you have to work hard and understand that with the journey to success, you're going to have failures. Mm-hmm. But I hope you and everyone else that's watching, you know, if you experience failures, I hope that, you know, lights a fire in you to like, you know, keep going, you know, don't give yeah. up. Yeah. You never lose. You just yeah. learn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know what? I think that's a great place for us to cut this off. Yeah. I really yeah. hope to reschedule some more time with you. Let's do I, it. Yeah. Man, <laughs> I want to, yeah, but let's, let's free up our day. Cause definitely, I think, definitely. uh, I think we could have a really good conversation about business for sure. Yeah. For sure. Provide a lot of value for a lot of people. <laughs> in definitely. any case. Well, thank you again for having me on. Um, thank you guys for watching on YouTube. If you stuck yeah. through the whole time 
And then go ahead and uh, tell people where they can find your YouTube, your Instagram, social media, all that. All right. So you can find my uh, regular Instagram. It's Dirty Germs. Dirty Germs. Dirty <laughs> And then the same things for Twitter. Um, Twitter is, you know, I just post everything what's on my mind. I post stupid stuff. You know, like I said, I'm a normal person. I have normal opinions. What, and I what's do your tag things. for uh, January? I know like we were doing like spooky germs, oh, holiday <laughs> germs, jolly germs. So what's, what's uh, January? New, okay. new year, new germs. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll you work know. on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, anytime, man. I really appreciate having you on. Definitely and uh, Rising Tide HNL for the people that are watching this on YouTube. Yeah, um, yeah we'll catch up. All right. Next Peace one. out. <laughs> Later.